Hi guys, hello, we are live, welcome. Hello. Uh, so we have Lewa Noga from Crippled Squad and we have Profize. Profis? Prophecy. Prophecy. Hello. Okay, from Goblins, welcome, welcome. So, uh, congratulations on your victory for the Goblins team and if you could tell us a little bit about uh, yourself for the start. Uh, Introduce my yourself. My team? Uh, yourself. As the team captain. Um. Well. Uh. Hmm. I, I guess I'm just. Uh. I'm just here more or less because my good friend Oliver the Golden had. Um. He had to go love his mother. You know, loving your mother is pretty weird. Not gonna lie. So. Uh. I decided to step in, help out today, and it was an incredibly fun time. Uh. No, I'm just here for the ride. A uh, dedicated CB player. Got too many hours in the game, you know. For a very good game. Cool. And from Crippled Squad, we have Leva Noga. So if you could tell us a little bit about yourself. So <laughs> I'm from Poland. I am 18 years old. And I like play Dual Blade. Don't hate me on chat, please. <laughs> no hate, no hate today, pure skill and pure good games. Yeah, guys, so congratulations one more on two victories back to back, back. but uh, I guess uh, there are no bad news today, right? As we had only one team, uh, sorry, one team already didn't make it to the tournament, so both of you guys advanced further on to the quarterfinals. We will be seeing uh, next week some of you playing right so uh, interesting to see a clarides uh, versus crippled squad playing next week and then for goblins you have guys a week off and in two weeks we'll be able to see something from you as well so uh, the first question i would see i would have is for the first match uh, where crippled squad were the attacking uh, side so from goblins perspective um how did you consider the timing, right? Uh, taking into consideration that you were able to destroy the towers and much, much time was lost for the attacking side because of that. And then also on the A point, you were able to hold off the first push quite nicely and the second, second fight also take, took quite long time. So we have seen a lot of time spent on A point. All this time perspective in the first match, how did, uh, how did your team like it? Were you happy that you were able to hold on on ace point for so much time, or what were the people thinking? Uh, yeah, um, the big plan is to destroy the tab left towers because you cannot be trapped on the staircase. So when the enemy pushes the far right tower, you can come up from the stairs, um, wipe their push, then go back down the stairs, reset, and wait. Um, we were very happy to hold on A for that amount of time. Uh, the key mistake made by the attackers was not pushing the far left tower because it's just impossible to push, really, in my opinion, without that, due to the trebuchets on the attacker's side, uh, it's impossible for the defenders to counter push. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then also, so we know that there's some Pondicard players uh, in your team today, as uh, Pion, of course, getting the MVP as well. Um, we noticed that they actually abandoned the A point last week. Was that something you have considered for today? Well, um, personally, I uh, with, with Oliver gone, I went into everything with a different game plan. Um, I, we did consider abandoning A, but I personally felt that um, with proper coordination, we could still burn the time to a high enough extent because preferably you can avoid the fight on home point. The fight on home point is going to be much harder than the fight on A, just in my opinion, due to cavalry. Um, we saw that cavalry uh, Armager Lancers came back towards the end there and nearly cost us the game. They had very good flanks on the left mm -hmm. supply. 
So um, we just were able to successfully avoid that for the most part, and we're able to play our game on A. Cool. Very, very nice input. And I didn't think about it in that regard, but uh, thank you for, for, for this additional input. Um, coming now to Levanoga from Crippled Squad. I also want to ask about the first game, and especially considering how uh, good it went for you at the end, where you almost, where you were close to, to, to having this. Um, I want to focus more on the middle of the game, right? So after you have pushed the towers and after the second push for A point, you managed to get it. You successfully captured the A point and the decision that was there was to push for the plus side. Um, what we see and what we have caught on, this, um, on the stream from the, from the upstairs was that there is a big discrepancy in the units, on the amount of units. Many players from the attacking side from crippled squad didn't have their units or they were low on the units, while the defenders were able to regroup on the plus side and they were full force. So did you consider uh, this push as a, just a try or you wanted to take their attention towards this point and look for some other opportunities? What was your thinking behind this uh, uh, So, So I think the... I saw they have only Pike Militia on the stars. I don't saw a fucking Forte Brasio under, under the, the shields. Uh, yes, but we don't open a, a gate, so that is uh, the biggest mistake. Uh, but... Hmm. I'm so fucking mad about this situation. <laughs> uh, that was my my big mistake because I call it and oh I don't know I have to analyze uh, I have to see this uh, from 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 your per, uh, perspective sure and I mean you have time for that fortunately right there is still few few days uh, seven to be exact for the next matches so definitely all the whole group stage was there to get you guys some tournament experience because as you said pre tournament you didn't have too much of course goblins uh, six of their players uh, having quite a, a few tournaments on their back, being uh, uh, more experienced uh, on the tournament stage, uh, it was, uh, I guess, uh, seen with more calm decisions all around. So, Stevie, uh, coming back to you and your questions. Yeah, absolutely. So, Lewanoga, something that, um, like, we almost thought that the game was over in game one, but then you guys managed to actually almost get the, the final. Uh, with just one army squad, what was your uh, idea there? What, what, what was the comms like uh, at the final push here? Uh, so, uh, what, what, what? The, what, the what? communication, so at, the, uh, at game one at the end, you guys yeah, were yeah. moving up the left supply and then you started rushing for the final cap. Yeah, uh, so that was the one minute to cap uh, last uh, a base. So we make a decision to just rush. And the uh, next mistake, we don't open a gate. We have to go by a left gate or right siege tower. Mm. So this gate a uh, lot of time to, to rotate there. Uh, but that was very close. We, we do good push to this supply point. But we don't have the time. If we don't push the stairs in me earlier, I think we, we can cap it, but don't have the time. Yeah, just a little short on time at the end there. And then, uh, prophecy for you, one question as well. Um, we noticed that you were using a lot of Berserkers. We know that you used to always use like a full calf lineup, at least uh, during the games as Goblins. Uh, why the Berserkers? Why so many? Um, I'd say a lot of it is me and Oliver. Um, we, we like to handle things differently than each other, but both, both work very well. Mm -hmm. uh, I went into it with different strategies and different unit composition than he would per se. Um, our guys are very fluent. They can play infantry, infantry, cavalry, doesn't matter. Uh, we, we have a lot of vets, as you said. Um, these guys have been playing tournaments for a long time. Um, our shot callers have been playing for a long time. Just all around good gameplay from everyone. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Nice. One more question I have uh, for, for Goblin teams all around is, uh, guys, why do you hate ranged units so much? Because for both games, I 
I don't think I have seen like maybe one or two or even zero. Did you take at all any ranged units into the games? No, we do not believe in ranged units. <laughs> so uh, you don't believe in ranged units, but I've noticed that you had four light armors, two of those being bows, one long bow, one mm -hmm. short bow. Did you, um, or, or what was the plan for these heroes? Of course, they are nice damage dealers and they can take and focus heroes and some critical units. But did you, for the whole tournament in the comms, have to um, manage them, like uh, dual blades, come on, take this guy or something like that? Or was it more skill and the initiative of, of given players to capture uh, some kills? Like, for example, in first game, when the attackers were um, getting out uh, after first push, the dual blades managed to catch two players and kill them. Um. So from our perspective, um, it, it's very important to make sure when you're making unit comps that the players like these units. And it's it's much more important, in my opinion, for the hero class. Um, these classes are what these players normally play. This is their main class. They play these in sieges, in territory war. So keeping them comfortable in their play style is 100% our goal. And it worked out very well. Um, the ranged heroes were very good for destroying artillery. Uh, we had them shoot the same artillery piece and shut it down so we didn't have to use a trebuchet on it. We could save the trebuchet for if we needed it for walls or for home. Um, for the dual blades, our dual blade players are very experienced on the class, so uh, it's, it's just awesome to keep them on that, and the work that they can do is very impressive. Cool. Yeah, that's, that's actually very good. I believe it uh, worked very well for you at the end making sure that players can perform to their best on what they are comfortable with. So good decision, I guess. Uh, so, Aritashima, moving on to your questions. Well, actually, you handled everything, I believe. Like, I mean, we don't play that much, so we have time, right? So, did you got anything interesting in the games? No, not really. Like, does Blackleaf uh, have anything to ask? Like, for me, it's it, you. You captured anything I wanted to ask. <laughs> okay, so sorry for just so good. sorry for taking all the fun questions. <laughs> I guess then, uh, yeah. So maybe then a question for Levanoga in uh, regards to the also the classes uh, chosen. Right, uh, we have seen on the on the second game that you went with much. Pretty much all of the team were on the short swords. So is it something that uh, you had some special tactics around and did it work for you at the end? Would you like to change it? From what you've seen? Uh, yep, we planned to defend uh, last point with 15 short sword to to ul to use ultimate. And uh, but we can't because they rush us. We can uh, swap a unit because one of short swords was on our, our supply point. So they did a really good job at, as an attacker. So good job, go please. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so the last question from my end to Prophecy is uh, in regard to the uh, how wide you played on the attack, meaning that you had players, at least one player, pretty much in every entrance doing something. And this seemed to be very well coordinated and very nicely timed. Meaning that when you were pushing from the corner on the main point with the main force, right? You had one person who was block or two players who were blocking the plus. You had one person who was flanking with the cavalry from one direction. You had another one from other direction. So this looked like very coordinated spectacle. Was it something that you had prepared earlier, you know, statically, guys, we do this, remember that, and then you say, we execute the plan 69 or whatever, right? Or was it more ad hoc shot calling that allowed you to perform such a good coordinated attacks? Um, it, it was more shot calling. Uh, one thing we noticed was they had two to three Namkin units out. And two to three Namkins is two to three units that can't fight us on the point. 
So we decided we would full send while range units were still out. Like I said, I hate ranged. <laughs> so does most of NA. And we we full send it. Um, it was a lot of our vets were calling these rotations. Um, a lot of it was independent plays, like players like Pion, um, Crit. Shot callers, we, we didn't really, really need to tell them to rotate there. A lot of these players that were flanking in at these entrances, outside of our starting setup, everything was purely reactionary. Um, these players were going off on their own intent to shut down their rotations with Cav. Um, our plan originally was we would, you know, we would full send tab left cavalry and tab right infantry, but it didn't end up panning out that way when we noticed that their units that they had out could not fight us. Mm -hmm. um, we knew that we could just take the straight up 15 v 15 and win it. So we ended just full sending to home. Cool. Cool. So yeah, happy that it worked so well for you. And uh, I can see there is one more question from chat coming to Crippled Squad. So Levanoga, the question is, what was the general idea for your attack for the A point? Could you share it with us or is it top secret information? Uh, so at first push, we just move uh, so many Imperial Pikes to the left side to push A and we can't counter uh, an enemy when they come uh, to stairs. So we fucked up uh, on this first push. Uh, and we, I think we don't use trebuch trebuchet. We, we just use trebuch when we push a supply point, I think. Uh, on A, I don't saw this trebuch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there were a few flying around, but uh, yeah, I guess yeah. could be more. But I'm yeah. Saying. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, all right, so if there are no more questions... Uh, uh, well, one question I would have for the um, for both team leaders, but we start with... Uh, goblins first. So, um, how did you weather to the game? Like, did you expect it to be harder or to be easier than how the matches actually went? Um, hmm. well, I kind of, uh, I, I kind of was spot on with, um, what I expected. Um, I know from VODs that I've seen from the European server, uh, we kind of know their play style. Um, they really like their pikes, so it went exactly as we anticipated it to, especially on attack. Um, you know, stalwarts beat pikes, and that's all there is to it, really, especially on the final push. Um, it was definitely a good fight, though, um, especially the the first fight. Um, uh, we were not expecting the West Supply push with Cavalry, um, but we were overall able to take it out with just sending our short swords to the point. I was very impressed, though, with their coordination, especially with their Cavalry. Okay, nice. Thank you. And uh, Nuga? Uh, so... We did. We didn't know what to expect. That is our first tournament, so I don't know. We will maybe nervous. I don't know, <laughs> but we will definitely learn a lot from it. A lot of experience. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, nevertheless, um, you both advanced right to the final stage, and um, just so you know. Um, goblins, you will fight in Nexus in two weeks, and Cripple Squad will fight Eclaridus next week. So, uh, Goblins, you fight against Nexus. Did you already watch some VODs on them, or uh, did Oliver did do? Um, we will definitely do our VOD review, we'll definitely do our homework. <laughs> uh, we haven't yet, though. We haven't yet. <laughs> nice, nice. We actually, and uh, Loga, yes. No, so go ahead. And Nova, uh, you go against Eclaridus, Noga. Yes, uh, how you yes, feel about that? Yeah, so they are a really good team. They they play really well and rotate very well on, on the map. They use map. They play as as a team. So what well, we will see. <laughs> <laughs> there is a time to prepare. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, and uh, why I was laughing is actually we have talked a little bit on stream with uh, viewers with CV about this, and uh, I consider uh, all of the four matchups that are going to happen uh, in the quarterfinals to be quite uh, interesting in the terms of the how teams ended up. So third matchup, Ten and Saint Gegner. Both of the teams are playing aggressively. They have very aggressive play style. They prefer to play on attack. So we will see how it will go. Pondgard and Lamaland, both these teams have not shown us everything they have behind hidden, right, in, the, in their pocket. So this can also be interesting. And then Ekralides and Crippled. What, guys, uh, what we have concluded is that uh, both of you have interesting ideas and the execution of this when it's done well, like the last push today, was very heavy for enemy to handle. So we will have to watch out for this, you know, uh, the, the overall game will be quite, uh, what we expect is that the overall game will, will be quite calm with, you know, quite uh, good pushes all around, defenses and so on. But then this bam, 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 these heavy hitters coming from nowhere, something unexpected. And when it comes to the Goblins and Nexus, from what we have seen today, compared to Nexus team that they played in, uh, in the beginning of the tournament, they are quite... Uh, uh, interesting in the choice uh, with their with their um, forces being very heavy on infantry and almost no ranged units so you uh, Frofizy bringing this additional input here might be also another interesting point to watch out so the unit composition and so on but this is you know our overall observations i'm sure you will spend enough time to prepare for upcoming matches and i would like to wish you all the best and the good luck for the quarterfinals and uh, hopefully you will be able to be victorious in your quarterfinal games and you will be able to talk once more in your post quarterfinal victory interview guys any closing words from anyone just a good game to everyone we fought um i was very impressed with you all around you guys will do well in your match i hope to see you again later in the tournament yeah Thanks, thanks for good games and good luck. Cool. Okay. Thank you very much to you guys for this discussion and uh, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>